Subcutaneous fat tissue is important for women's brain health. Anatomical and physiological differences between women and men are obvious. However, their importance for the body still surprises us. It turns out that fat tissue accumulating in various places in women may be important for their brain health. Women are more likely to store subcutaneous fat in places such as the hips, buttocks and back of the arms. In turn, men are more prone to the so-called visceral obesity. However, Recent research shows that the deposition of subcutaneous fat in women may protect against inflammation of the brain, which can lead to problems such as dementia and stroke. As we know, in women, fat tissue is rather subcutaneous and accumulates on their hips, buttocks and arms, while in men, most of it accumulates in the abdominal cavity taking the form of the so-called visceral obesity. The latter is much more pro-inflammatory. Men are also at greater risk, at least before menopause in women, of related health problems such as heart attack or stroke. But is this due to the location of the fat tissue? Typically, such differences are related to hormonal balance and estrogen, but it is worth looking at this issue from a broader perspective. Some research that may shed new light on this matter was conducted on mice, which, as it turns out, are similar to humans in some respects. The similarity lies in the fact that female mice also have more subcutaneous fat tissue than male mice, and less fat located in the abdominal cavity. However, it was decided to investigate what effect this may have on inflammation that may threaten the brain. First of all, by examining mice whose diet was high in fat. Scientists noticed that until the females entered menopause, they did not observe any brain inflammation or insulin resistance, which in turn can lead to diabetes. In turn, after about 48 weeks from that moment, the distribution of fat tissue in females began to resemble that observed in males to a greater extent. Then it was decided to subject the females to a procedure resembling liposuction, the aim of which was to remove subcutaneous fat tissue. The hormonal balance of mice was not interfered with in any way. The result was surprising, as these females began to see increased levels of brain inflammation in a manner comparable to that seen in males. At the same time, their level of visceral obesity increased, as if fat tissue had been redirected there. However, the results in mice fed a low-fat diet were dramatically different. In their case, the removal of subcutaneous fat tissue early in their lives contributed only to a slight increase in the amount of fat accumulated in the abdominal cavity. However, no significant impact on their brain health was observed. It is worth emphasizing that Alexis M. Stranahan from the Medical College at Augusta University, who has been conducting research on this topic for years, noticed that in males, visceral obesity is pro-inflammatory in the brain, while subcutaneous tissue transplantation helps to reduce this risk. So this is another area where women probably have an advantage over men. The world's first sand battery is the answer to energy challenges. Energy production, transmission, storage. These and other challenges increasingly keep the energy sector awake at night in the modern world. 
In addition, it is increasingly important that the energy obtained is green. Ecological energy. Scientists from Finland seem to have come up with an idea that addresses all of these challenges at once. Finnish scientists have built the world's first fully functioning sand battery that can store energy for many months. The idea is simple. Storing heat in the sand to heat homes over the winter. Certainly. One of the reasons why Finland undertakes various innovative initiatives in the energy sector is Russia's reaction to this country's declaration of willingness to join NATO. As a result, Russia suspended electricity supplies to Finland. The country will therefore have to take action to provide its citizens with enough heat and light. Perhaps ordinary sand will come to Finland's aid. In one of the power plants in the west of this country, in Kankanpa, approximately 230 kilometers northwest of Helsinki, the first sand battery was installed. Its construction is very simple. It is about 100 tons of construction sand enclosed in an insulated silo. Why sand? This solution has only advantages. This material is, of course, cheap. It is able to store thermal energy, as it can be heated up to a temperature of about 500 degrees Celsius. What is equally important? The energy stored in this way can be stored for months. Possible applications are obvious. Heating houses in winter. When electricity prices are higher, this solution also offers the opportunity to save real money. If we add to this the fact that energy obtained from renewable sources, such as solar panels or wind turbines, could be stored in this way, sand batteries begin to appear to us as an ideal solution. Storing the energy obtained in this way poses many problems. However, the possibilities of using sand go much beyond using it as a reservoir for thermal energy. Advanced research in this direction has been conducted for years by, among others, American National Renewable Energy Laboratory, NREL. This research is being conducted towards the possibility of using sand as a battery for green energy. But could these types of batteries even start to compete with traditional lithium batteries? Research is being conducted also in this respect. For example, a group of scientists managed to create a battery that can operate up to three times longer than a lithium battery. And today, most batteries are made of lithium and are expensive take up a lot of space, and can only handle a limited amount of excess energy. In the case of a sand battery, it will be different. Sand could be a simple, cost-effective way to store energy. Every time there is a surplus of available electricity, we want to be able to bring it into our storage very quickly, says Marku Ulanen co-author of the project and one of the founders of Polar Night Energy. The device was installed at the Vatajinkowski power plant, which manages the district heating network for this area. The assumptions of Polar Night Energy look something like this. In the summer months, when energy is cheaper, the sand in the battery is to be heated with hot air to a temperature of 500 degrees Celsius. Sand is a very effective medium for storing heat and loses little over time. The authors of the invention claim that their device can keep sand at a temperature of 500 degrees Celsius for several months. In winter, when energy prices are higher, the battery releases heat, which is used to heat water into the heating network and then pumped to homes or offices. Unfortunately, converting heat into electricity is not very efficient,
But long-term storage of energy in the form of heat is also a huge opportunity for industry. Where the heat needed to produce pharmaceuticals or textiles is obtained from burning fossil fuels. For now, the Finns have a working, commercial system that is currently performing well. We should wait to see what it will look like in the future. Scientists suggest that ancient bacteria may still be lurking beneath the surface of Mars. In new experiments, scientists simulated the Martian environment to see how long dried and frozen bacteria could survive in these harsh conditions. It turned out that ancient microbes could survive under the surface of Mars much longer than previously thought. The buried microbes would be shielded from cosmic rays and solar wind. This means that evidence of life may still lie dormant and buried beneath the surface of Mars. In research under the supervision of Professor Michael Daly took part, among others, Brian Hoffman and A.J. Sharma of Northwestern University. Their findings suggest that if life ever evolved on Mars, its biological remains could be revealed by future missions, including ExoMars and Mars Life Explorer. In this second mission, the rover would be equipped with drills to extract materials from a depth of up to two meters below the planet's surface. Scientists have previously proven that certain strains of bacteria could survive on Mars despite the planet's harsh environment. Therefore, there is a risk that future astronauts and space tourists could inadvertently contaminate Mars with Earth's bacteria. We concluded that terrestrial contamination on Mars would be essentially persistent, over timescales of thousands of years, Hoffman says. This could complicate scientific efforts to find life on Mars. In turn, if microbes evolved on Mars, they may be able to survive to this day. This means that samples from the red planet may pollute the Earth, he explains. The environment on Mars is harsh and unforgiving. It is dry and frosty, with temperatures reaching as low as minus 63 degrees Celsius in mid-latitudes. Mars is also constantly bombarded by cosmic radiation. To investigate whether life could survive under these conditions, Daly, Hoffman and their colleagues first determined the limits of the survival of microorganisms under ionizing radiation. They then exposed six types of Earth bacteria and fungi to a simulated Martian surface, frozen and dry, and exposed them to radiation that mimicked cosmic rays. Researchers found that some Earth microorganisms could potentially survive on Mars on timescales of hundreds of millions of years. Scientists have found that one hardy microorganism, Danococcus radiodurans, sometimes called the Conan bacteria, is particularly well adapted to surviving the harsh conditions on Mars. In novel experiments, the bacterium survived massive doses of radiation in a frigid, barren environment. The team also assumed that bacteria could exist under the surface of Mars. To do this, he exposed the microbes to much lower doses of radiation than what occurs on the planet's surface. It turned out that bacteria can withstand radiation and survive under the surface of the red planet for up to 1.5 million years buried at a depth of only 10 centimeters. If the bacteria were at a depth of 10 meters, the radiation would not harm them for up to 280 million years. 
This means that if a conan of the bacteria, like microbe evolved at a time when water was last flowing on Mars, its living remains could still lie dormant deep beneath the Martian surface. Although D. radiodurans buried beneath the surface of Mars has not been able to survive in a dormant state for the estimated 2 to 2.5 billion years since liquid water disappeared from the Red Planet. Martian environments are regularly altered by meteorite impacts, Daly explains. We suggest that periodic melting could allow for intermittent repopulation. Moreover, if Martian life ever existed, its macromolecules and viruses would survive much, much longer, explains the scientist.